If I had to sum up today's video in a single word, it would be messy. The 2024 Olympics just wrapped up in Paris, and it really left me wondering how many things could possibly go wrong in a two week time period. And it turns out the answer is basically everything. And listen, I may not be the sportiest sports person to ever sport. If anything, I think Dave here is more of the sportsman between the two of us. He actually earned a spot in a couple of the track and field events in the 2024 Olympics, but they wound up kicking him out because they realized he had an advantage since he was always ahead. Sorry. But listen, my general lack of athleticism aside, I know a hot mess when I see one, and that is exactly what this Olympics was. Usually I'd say we're gonna cover everything from A to B to C, but so much was happening, I think I'm just going to focus on the parts that stood out to me. Even just this cross section of Olympics news has everything from like a transphobia related cyberbullying campaign to a dance routine that was so bad, I think it got basically scrubbed from the internet. And then throw in a few key areas where the Olympics committee itself messed up big time. And as you can see, there's plenty to discuss. So welcome, I'm D'Angelo, and I am your professor of postmodern rock formations, which is a very real degree that I definitely have. Or maybe I'm just broadcasting myself talking in my room like YouTube used to be. And as we get into today's Olympics video, I want to make one thing really clear. I have nothing but like the utmost respect for the athletes who are there to just represent their country and have a good time. Well, I have respect for most of the athletes. Actually, one of them we're talking about is really, really bad. But I think most of the people there were wonderful and amazing, and I was happy to see them. And as you're going to see from the stories we're going over, a lot of these things actually just make me feel bad for the athletes in question. So this first story is nonsensical to the point of almost not even sounding real. And it centers on a boxer, Imane Khalif, who was representing Algeria's boxing team. She found herself at the center of the just immensely tiring trans people in sports debate where like a bunch of conservative people who don't actually care about sports pretend to that way they can just hate on trans people but the thing that adds that extra layer of what is happening here is the fact that Imane Khalif is not transgender. This woman does not identify as trans. She's not trans, objectively. She is a cisgender woman who found herself at the center of a transgender hate campaign solely because she was too good at her job. Um, as a boxer, apparently, she knows what she's doing because one of her fights in the Olympics ended in 46 seconds. The woman she was fighting, Italian boxer Angela Carini, she just dipped. She was like, you know what? Nope, I'm good, actually. 40 seconds into the fight, she took a blow to the face and then just folded. Carini went to the corner for her coach to fix her headgear. After briefly resuming, she returned to her corner once more and stopped the fight. I know this may sound just like a skill issue on Karini's part, but she says, I had to preserve my life. It could have been the match of a lifetime, but I had to preserve my life as well in that moment. And you know, boxing as a sport does have a level of danger associated with it, but the way she framed this led to this massive misunderstding. Just before her opponent, Khalif Sarm, was raised by the referee, Karini could be heard on camera saying, it's not right. And then when Karini was interviewed about this, she said, for the experience that I have and the maturity as a woman that I have, I said, I hope my nation won't take it badly. And speaking about Khalif, she said, I am someone who doesn't judge anyone. I'm not here to give judgments. So conservatives hearing, this isn't right. I'm a woman and I'm not here to judge anybody. They unironically interpreted this as, oh, her opponent must be a transgender woman. Should just have a transgender Olympics. They can compete with each other. I mean, they also have special Olympics. I, I think this is this individual's attempt to be transphobic and I think ableist at the same time, but all they achieved was sounding dumb as hell. Men don't belong in women's sports. Hashtag I stand with Angela Carini. Let's get it trending. Okay, Riley Gaines, whoever you are, I guess a sport. Kentucky Swim 22. Girl, this isn't even your sport. Also, let's make one thing clear. I'm not advocating for men to be in women's sports, but even if Imane Khalif was transgender, she still wouldn't be a man. Women are women. If you're a transgender woman, that's one way of being a woman. Nobody has the right to tell you the right way of being a woman. But the absurdity is that she is not even a transgender woman in the first place. But I guess instead of spending the less than three seconds it takes to come to this conclusion, Elon Musk saw Riley Gaines' tweet and just signal boosted that to his whole platform. Literally the entire app as he is its CEO. Absolutely, he says. I, I just, I love how this has 
1.8 million likes and 222 million views because Elon Musk retweeted this. 200 million people laying eyes on the misinformation that is contributing to the hate campaign against this woman. But you know what? I think I might have to give Elon Musk a pass because maybe he did not have three minutes to check. I know the man is very busy having 25,000 children promoting racist conspiracy theories and signal boosting all manner of trash 24-7, so who am I to judge him? Oh, but what discussion of trans issues would be complete without the input of JK Rowling? Watch this whole thread, then explain why you're okay with a man beating a woman in public for your entertainment. This isn't sport. From the bullying cheat in red all the way up to the organizers who will allowed this to happen, this is men reveling in their power over women. Joanne, my brother in Christ, can I call you Joanne? There is no man in the photo. You would be wrong if Imani Khalif was trans, but she literally ain't. But wait, oh my god, I almost forgot to make it a US political issue. Yes, I'm being serious. An Algerian woman competing in France against an Italian boxer is now being spun into a United States political issue. We got the governor of Florida saying, of course she supports it. Biden-Harris administration is even trying to strip money for school lunches for poor kids from schools who don't embrace gender ideology. Biden-Harris elevate the- honestly, I'm not even going to finish reading this. I, I, I might actually be losing brain cells right now. But yeah, in a world where we have United States governors interacting with Elon Musk to promote misinformation and repeatedly misgender, a cisgender woman as part of like this targeted hate campaign. This is genuinely disgusting behavior. And here's the thing. I was just highlighting like really stupid tweets. But the thing about really stupid, it's not mutually exclusive with really dangerous and harmful. French prosecutors literally had to launch an investigation because even the people defending Khalif were getting death threats. Kirsty Burroughs, an official in charge of the International Olympic Committee's unit for safeguarding and mental health, she was getting death threats over defending one of the athletes. Also, notice how this says the unit is also examining complaints over death threats, harassment, or other abuse targeting people involved in the Olympics opening ceremony. The hate mongers are already out in full force because the opening ceremony had this display and the good Christians were just so offended by, I guess what appears to be drag queens referencing the Last Supper by posing in a reference to one of the most famous paintings of all time. I guess these queens were somehow disrespecting Christianity as a whole. And respect is a big deal for Christians who rage at LGBT people online, right? Just so much respect for everybody. Forget all of the multiple times in the Bible where Jesus told us not to judge people. Let's just focus on all the verses where he said drag queens were bad. Oh wait, the you're disrespecting our religion criticism was not the only thing these people were being hit with. They were also like, think of the children, to the point where this guy had to get sued by this person because this dude was calling the people involved in the ceremony pedos. They were literally standing there. Like they were actually just standing there. Think of the children. And you know, if you guys are so concerned about the children, it's kind of weird that I didn't see nearly as much criticism for the actual child rapist at the Olympics. This article from 2016 details how this dude was jailed for admitting three counts of rape against a child he met. A 12-year-old British girl, which is just awful. And for somebody who is British and claims to care so much about the little girls, imagine my shock that JK Rowling was just radio silent on this issue. It's a trick question, by the way. I'm, I'm not shocked at all. JK Rowling, this is not about caring about women. This is not about caring about children. It's only about hating trans people. So much so that it's spilling over onto people who are not even transgender. But y'all didn't even do a good job hating because she still won, though. I know they must have been so mad about that. Imani Khalif won gold anyway, despite being in the middle of all of this. And this is what she had to say. We've got the subtitles and everything. The message that we send to the whole world is that they are going to be able to make the Olympics and to make the Olympics because the thing that happened That is like an incomprehensibly calm response to people. I have so much respect for her because let me be clear, she does not have to be this nice at all. We are in the Olympics and we came here to give a great job للمشاهدين للعائلة تاعنا 
ان شاء الله ما نزيدش نشوف مثل هذه الاشياء في اولمبياد قادمه ان شاء الله شكرا لك she didn't play into this transphobic nonsense at all she just did her job and won and if that's not like the ultimate flex of a response i don't know what is that plus she filed a well-deserved lawsuit against jk rowling elon musk and everybody who was involved in this cyberbullying nonsense and again these people were contributing to hundreds of millions of people being influenced by the misinformation that placed Imani Khalif at the center of a hate campaign. So yes, she absolutely was in her right to sue them. Whether there's consequences or not remain to be seen, but one would hope there's some form of justice there somewhere. There should be repercussions for hate. End of story. My verdict is Imani Khalif, even if she was transgender, still wouldn't deserve any of the hate that she's getting. And the fact that she's not actually should show us how all forms of discrimination are really bad for all of us. The trans community, they are the ones who are most primarily affected by this. But transphobia is awful for cis people as well, just in a completely different, lesser way. You just start veering a little too far outside of people's really limited preconceived notions of gender, and then all of a sudden people are mad at you for literally existing. But shout out to Imani Khalif, she is absolutely a champion throughout all of this and let's take a look at our next story but first i am introducing in this video what i'm calling a positivity break not everything that happens all the time is bad which is a hot take i know and the olympics especially is like a microcosm of good and bad so i kind of want my video to reflect that so for our first positivity break we're going to take a brief look at a different olympic sport shooting aka the sport in which people went viral because they looked cooler than everybody else at the Olympics. The main characters at the Olympic shooting sport were Kim Yeji and Yusuf Dikic. Kim Yeji went viral because she looks like the protagonist of some sort of like 90s cyberpunk sci-fi action game. Like there's being photogenic and then there's looking so cool that it is physically impossible to take a bad picture of you. <laughs> and lest you think it's only in pictures, she looks this cool doing her job as well. She's like that one character in like that medieval RPG that just has guns for some reason. <laughs> Y'all can't tell me the way she dismantles that isn't the coldest thing you've ever seen. And then Yusuf Dikic, this dude went viral for the opposite reason. Because unlike Kim Yeji's cyberpunk setup, he wasn't wearing any sort of special protection. <laughs> Absolutely no eye shield, just normal glasses. An expression that can only be described as like, mildly concerned hands in his pocket casual as all get out and he still won the silver medal if this man is the last thing i see before i die then honestly maybe i just deserved it but yeah there was just some really dope stuff happening at the olympics so far be it for me to make it sound like it was all bad these people are awesome so for our next story it has the added benefit of being low-key funny i think a lot of the things i talk about are not funny and i have to work really hard to try to find the humor in them that way i don't cry but i'm sorry this is just hilarious we're gonna talk about ray gun yes her name is ray gun whose dance routine went so poorly i don't think it's possible to find the full version online anymore so rachel gun who goes by ray gun which come on if that's not genius i don't know what is she has a whole origin story okay not the kind that you think would wind up turning into like olympics related controversy but nevertheless here we are somehow they'll see me something on TV or something on Instagram and they'll go, wait, is this you? And that definitely distracts the class. Yes, Raygun is a university lecturer, a PhD actually. And whereas I think many people's love for dance is, I guess, inherent, she got into dance for her doctoral thesis, which somehow turned into a dream of performing breaking, the style of dance that she does, at the Paris Olympics. I was looking at what research there was in the field there was a lot on rap um but there was very little on breaking and sure enough she made it to the olympics so what does a breaking dance routine from a phd lecturer at the olympic stage actually look like you may be wondering well honestly you may have already seen it because it went viral because oh my god yeah um oh okay wow that one's me trying to get out of bed in the morning okay honestly that's kind of impressive i won't lie but she is really proud of herself and you know i i think she kind of just lost me at the bunny hop like i i i suppose and even just due to me putting the few clips i was able to find into this video i am now afraid for my life maybe not my life but the life of this video because almost every single place that this video has been posted 
has been scrubbed. Whether it's just like a random post from the breaking subreddit to a viral post on the sports subreddit. Sorry, this post has been removed by the moderators of r slash sports. Even the YouTube videos keep disappearing. Like I see new video uploads every day because of how quickly they are just getting yeeted from the internet. And here's the thing, right? I understand why it went viral, but what if we're all wrong? I'm no expert in breaking. I mean, I do have eyes and they weren't very happy about what they were seeing, but maybe I just don't understand dance innately enough to get it. But uh, I guess the judges didn't really get it either because it says Ray Gunn failed to score any points from the judges in the round robin stage. She then left the competition after losing all three of her bouts. I was never going to beat these girls on what they do best, their power moves, Gunn told ESPN. What I bring is creativity. I mean, the bunny hop is nothing if not creative, so I guess I have to give her that. And look, I'm not hating on her for dancing poorly, I just think it's funny. Like, look at this meme. This is funny to me. I feel like I can hear the quirky marimba music in this image. This might actually be my favorite meme that I saw because it works on like multiple levels. Like, come on, this is breaking brilliant. And I actually saved this meme to show you because it's just really cute. Like, look. Aww. Look at him go. But you know, that's not to say that everybody, I guess, was making fun of this. Breaking community rallies around Australian Olympian whose kangaroo hop failed to impress judges. Even the head judge of the Olympic breaking competition, he said she did her best, but her level was maybe not as high as the other competitors, which is such a diplomatic way of putting it. Breaking is all about originality and bringing something to the table and representing your country or region. This is exactly what Raygun was doing. She got inspired by her surroundings, which in this case, for example, was a kangaroo. Man, it almost kind of sounds like he's making fun of her, but I legitimately cannot tell. And look, if you're thinking to yourself, well, this is kind of funny and strange, but how is this like a disaster or any sort of controversy? Well, the internet does what it always does when somebody gets popular very suddenly. And so Raygun found herself at the center of a bunch of really just awful comments. Comments about her age, people just being really demeaning and nasty to her. I certainly think there's criticism about why were you there question mark surely there was somebody in australia who maybe worked a little harder maybe they could have done a better job representing people than ray gun but what do i know but no instead of that people were just being awful to her others raised concerns about abusive comments gun had received the world dance sport federation offered her mental health support i had actually looked up comments to see if people were really being hateful or not and at one point 37 seconds ago someone said where's the support for the real olympians whose place you took to do your idiotic seizure thing. We know you weren't supposed to be there and that's why you're being investigated. I hate these victim types. Listen, you are never going to convince me that what she did requires this level of energy. And that was just me going through comments that were there in like the last couple minutes. I have no idea what kind of stuff she's actually seeing or like what's winding up in her inbox. But yes, I absolutely believe it's probably awful. I didn't realize that that would also open the door to so much hate, uh, which is frankly been pretty devastating. People were so mad at her for calling it hate and saying that it was devastating, but I'm going to go out on a limb here and say the hate she was referring to were people literally saying that they hate her. Honest criticism is not hate, so says this commenter, and that I totally agree with. We're not hating you, we're just making fun of you, but there are literally people in these comments saying, I hate people like you. I think some of the people in the comments did not get the memo. Like PhD and delusion studies? That's funny. I'm sorry, I hate to say it, but ageism is kinda not. Well, I went out there and I had fun. I did take it very seriously. I worked my butt off. I think she was taking it a little bit too seriously, which is kind of the idea, kind of the point she didn't get, but it is what it is. And of the 20,000 comments that Raygun got on her response in like a day, I really hope she doesn't take all of them to heart. Just most of them. My verdict on the Raygun thing is I actually miss when internet drama used to be like this. Like, do you remember when people used to go viral because they would just do weird or funny things and not groom minors? Yes, Raygun was absolutely occupying somebody else's space that should have been there instead of her. And no, that does not happen without an immense amount of privilege and connections. But forgive me for saying that at the end of the day, I would rather have a dozen Raygun controversies than like the average thing that people get mad at you for on the internet nowadays. Now we do have one more story, and this one to me is not only the most frustrating, but 
It's the most obvious here that the Olympics itself, the committee, is completely in the wrong every step of the way. But before we get mad, I thought we could use another positivity break. So Snoop Dogg was at the Olympics and this man was pretty much just completing all of the Olympic side quests. Like it was a joy to watch. He was the torchbearer for Team USA. He even did a bit of running like, hello, don't sleep as he said on Twitter. Spen was like, I don't care if y'all are having fun. I'm just out here dancing with the equestrian horse riders. Literally every single time Snoop Dogg's name came up, he was just doing something exceedingly random, but also very fun and supportive. Rooting for the athletes, hanging out with Cookie Monster, proving that he low-key would have cleared Raygun in that breaking competition, but that's beside the point. Snoop Dogg is once again a reminder that the Olympics are actually fun. Okay, not everything is horrible 24-7. 23-7? Maybe, but I certainly cherish that modicum of positivity I can find wherever I can find it nowadays. But alas, back to basics. So our final story involves yet a different sport. We had shooting, boxing, breaking, whatever Raygun was doing, but now we have gymnastics. And oh my god, this is definitely the most frustrating story of the day. But what's weird is I initially had this in my good news section. So in the women's gymnastics competition, these three women were just killing it, first, second, and third place, and they actually made history as well. Simone Biles, basically the greatest of all time, Rebecca Andrade from Brazil, and Jordan Childs all showed up and showed out, resulting in what was actually the first all-black Olympic gymnastics podium. So obviously, this is like literally historical. Everybody was proud of them. I was seeing so many wonderful reactions and it didn't even cross my mind that the story could go sour because as the great poet Ice Spice once said, how can I lose if I'm already chose? Like they already got the medals. How could this possibly go wrong? Well, they literally took Jordan Childs' medal back. The Olympic Committee messed up so bad here that even explaining what happened is confusing, so strap in. So the score that gave Jordan her third place wasn't actually the first score they gave her. They judged her performance incorrectly and at first gave her a fifth place score. However, the team appealed this, which is a standard procedure and something you're allowed to do. And so they recalculated and all was well question mark. But this is actually kind of messed up though, because in the time between them announcing Jordan's wrong score and then going back and fixing it and reordering the ranking, one woman thought she was in third place. For all intents and purposes, Anna Barbosu was in third place until they were like, oh, sorry, we messed up. Just kidding. You're not getting on that podium. And I literally could not imagine that. That is just awful. That is obviously in no way, shape or form Jordan's fault because she rightfully earned that third place. But it's really unfortunate how that third place was unveiled due to the missteps taken by the Olympic Committee. But what if these two women weren't the only ones whose scores or ranking was up for debate? The woman in fifth, Maneka Bonea, was penalized for leaving the mat during her floor exercise, but video did not appear to show her actually stepping out of bounds. So Jordan earned her third place, but they gave her fifth place at first and she had to fight for it. Anna thought she earned third place until they were like, oopsie, just kidding, made a mistake, stand over there while somebody else wins. And Maneka Bonea in fifth place didn't get her score calculated correctly either. And like with this many mistakes, I'm just like, who even knows what these scores actually were? So my first inclination would honestly be to award a tie. Like if these three extremely talented women were all so neck and neck that minor errors on our part that we should not have made resulted in them getting all jumbled around. And if we told certain people they were going to win and then changed our mind after the fact, I really don't see how like breaking tradition since we already messed up would be bad, but instead they were actually like, wait a second, let's just take Jordan Childs' medal back for a completely different reason. So the Olympics decided on Saturday, the initial inquiry made by the USA over Jordan Childs' score, so that first one where they were like, hey, you guys messed up, we should be in third, it was filed after the one minute deadline. So they reverted her score to what it was before, putting her back in fifth place. Meaning despite this picture of her winning third, third place, which is based off of the correct interpretation of her score, they undid their reevaluation and demoted her. So now officially she got fifth. Anna got bumped back up to number three. So I guess she did get the bronze after all. And Childs now doesn't have a medal at all. And Vonea's score is still probably inaccurate. So she might've been higher too. Y'all did all three of these women 
dirty. But trust me, it somehow gets worse. You know how they were like, oh, sorry, guys, you took more than a minute. Because to be fair, one minute is the time limit you have after the score is submitted. Yeah, well, it turns out that that was just a completely made up reason. According to USA Gymnastics, the time stamped video evidence submitted to the arbitration committee shows that the inquiry was filed 47 seconds after the score was posted, followed by a second statement 55 seconds after. But despite that, USA Gymnastics was notified by the Court of Arbitration for Sport that their rules do not allow for an arbitral award to be reconsidered even when conclusive new evidence is presented. Unless, of course, you're taking away her medal, right? Y'all seem pretty quick to reconsider the award that way. But no, arbitration panel will not reconsider ruling in Jordan Child's medal inquiry. Jordan responded, and once again, we just have an athlete who is so very professional in the face of something that is so very messed up. I have no words. This decision feels unjust and comes as a significant blow, not just to me, but to everyone who has championed my journey. To add to the heartbreak, the unprompted racially driven attacks on social media are wrong and extremely hurtful. Yeah, I, I actually forgot to mention that there was a lot of that going on. I mean, three black women standing on an international stage being completely joyful and radiant and celebrating their accomplishments. I'm sure you can guess who was angry about that. Anyway, Childs says, I am now confronted with one of the most challenging moments of my career. Believe me when I say I have had many. I will approach this challenge as I have others and will make every effort to ensure that justice is done. I believe that at the end of this journey, the people in control will do the right thing. And one can certainly hope that's the case. Seeing the rules just so clearly bent one way to take something Thing from her and then seeing the olympics claim oh we have to follow the rules so we can't give it back really is just upsetting and sure one gymnast wound up getting third place to not third place to back to third place but as far as i'm concerned no one really won here this is just a loss for the olympics the way the committee just buried their head in the sand is just appalling honestly but i think the athletes in this scenario once again did great i'm rooting for them and hopefully they know that just because the olympics is doing this doesn't make it right at all and most of us can see right through it but regardless as far as i'm concerned no amount of controversy can detract from how great of a job most people in this scenario were doing and there you have just some of my olympic takes seriously so much happened you could probably make another video this exact length but fill it with a bunch of different information dave's take is that even he would be better at judging the gymnastics competition despite the fact that he literally can't even see us right now and i am curious to hear your take i mean this is the part of the video where like a layman would ask you to subscribe and like the video and leave a comment, but I will ask you to enroll, evaluate the video, and submit your feedback. Because this, of course, is a 100%, but maybe not really, but usually somewhat, don't look too closely, unaccredited university. Just ask anybody in the student body and they'll tell you, we're totally legit. And as for me, I know I did just upload yesterday, and funnily enough, I am also uploading tomorrow, but don't get too excited. I do not have a schedule on this channel. And the truth of the matter is whether you see me again in 24 hours or 24 months is really anyone's guess. So until then, thanks for watching. And if any of you were planning on entering the 2028 Olympics as a breaking competitor to challenge Raygun, uh, it turns out that breaking won't be part of the competition at all. So oops.